In this video, we are going to be determining which values of our controller gain will keep our process stable. So if we were tuning a P-only controller, uh, how big can we make our gain before our system becomes too unstable and we get a catastrophe? And so we're going to be using the Ruth array in order to determine uh, the values of K that will be appropriate for our controller. And so the very first thing to start with is determining the closed loop transfer function. And based on this control block diagram I have to the left here, our closed loop transfer function is equivalent to, so if we had Y, our output over our input, our set point, this is equal to K times GP, sorry, divided by one plus the product of all the transfer functions we have present, which is just K and GP. And so what we're interested in here is the denominator of our closed loop transfer function, which is also called our characteristic equation, because the characteristic equation is where we're going to be determining the poles of our closed loop transfer function. And so if we now look more closely at our characteristic equation, one plus K times GP, this is equivalent to one plus K times, and we have GP written up here, 0 0.1 divided by S plus one times 2S plus one. And because our characteristic equation is the in the denominator of our closed loop transfer function, and we want to care specifically about the denominator of our closed loop transfer function specifically, we only really care about the numerator of this characteristic equation because the denominator of our characteristic equation, because it's already in the denominator of the, of the CLTF, is gonna actually be in the numerator. So it gets a little bit tricky, but um, bear with me. So, so what we're gonna have here is, uh, if we now combine these two terms, what we'll find is that we'll have S plus one times two S plus one plus and then 0 0.1 times your gain of your controller K. And this is equal to 2S squared plus 3S plus one plus 0 0.1 KC. And so now that we've determined uh, the numerator of our characteristic equation, we can actually go about determining and building our Ruth array. And so building the Ruth array is essentially just looking at the coefficients on, in front of each one of these terms. And so um, the way it works is that you look at your first, third, fifth, every odd coefficient in your um, characteristic equations numerator. And so in this case, we would build an array based on the first, third, fifth, and so on coefficients. So here, what we have is the number two. So I'll just write this out. We have our Ruth array. We have the number two, and then we have another quantity, one plus 0 0.1 times KC. Now, if we move to the second row of our Ruth array, it is defined to be the second, fourth, sixth, and so on. Every even uh, element coefficient of our numerator uh, in our characteristic equation. And so in this case, it would just be the number three. And we can pretend there was another term, but here it's just really zero. And so uh, we've built our first two rows of our Ruth array, and now we're going to set about building our third row. And so the third row will have this quantity I will call alpha. And alpha is defined to be essentially, it's almost like the determinant, you're gonna be doing a cross product multiplication of these two terms here and subtracting it. And so if we determine what alpha is, alpha will be the cross product of 
this, so we'll have 3 times 1 plus 0 0.1 times Kc, and we're going to be subtracting it from the other cross product, which would be 2 times 0, which is 0, and we're going to be dividing this by specifically our bottom left element, which is 3. So alpha right here is equivalent to 1 plus 0 0.1 Kc, and I'll just plug that in directly right here. 1 plus 0 0.1 Kc. And so what you do is you can also, um, if we had a higher degree characteristic equation, we could continue to expand, but for the sake of an introduction and to make this uh, a succinct example, we will stick with this. And so essentially, if we wanted to continue, what we find is we get zeros and we could pad our array with zeros um, as we do in MATLAB sometimes, but we have completely populated our Ruth array and worked down to our lowest element that we can get to. And so the thing with Ruth arrays is for it to be stable, so for stability, every element in the first column must be positive. Okay, and so what that means is that 2 and 3 are already positive numbers, so there's nothing we need to care about there, but our last term here that we just evaluated, so therefore 1 plus 0 0.1 times Kc must be greater than 0. And so if we evaluate this and actually solve for what Kc must be, it tells us that Kc, or your controller game K, must be greater than negative 10 for stability. Okay, and so um, that's how we can evaluate and solve these problems. And uh, it is a nice introduction to the Ruth array. I hope you guys find it useful and thanks for watching.